In the Warhammer 40k universe, the Imperium of Man worships the God Emperor of Mankind, a dying ruler who sits immobile and rotting on his golden throne. In ages long past, he ruled the galaxy with a golden fist, creating genetically modified super soldiers called the Adeptus Astartes, also known as Space Marines. They are the bulwark against terror, they are the defenders of humanity, and they shall know no fear. Ultramarines are the quintessential warriors of humanity, as they are the largest chapter of Space Marines in the Imperium. Now there are many Space Marine chapters, and typically they inhabit and protect a single planet. Not the Ultramarines. They control a realm of 500 planets within the realm called Ultramar. And if you aren't familiar with 40k lore, but you know what a Space Marine is, you're probably thinking of an Ultramarine. The leader of these forces is the Primarch named Rabute Gilliman, a guy with the silliest name in the entire universe, and the community has come up with millions of variations of his name. Rabute was one of the Emperor's 21 superhuman sons called the Primarchs, who held the same brilliance as their father. Gilliman has a very extensive history and is one of the most documented characters in the 40k universe. To visualize this, I have printed his almost 19,000 word wiki page, which spans the entire length of my apartment. For this reason, I'm going to keep his story very brief and just give you the essence of his character and all the cool stuff he's done. Anyways, 10,000 years ago in the 30th millennium, all 20 suns were scattered throughout the universe, and Gilliman was raised on the planet of Macrag which is basically Roman space. Rabute would grow up to lead the nation into a prosperous new age, and eventually the emperor would find his son, be impressed by his leadership skills, and Rabute would become the leader of the Ultramarines. Make them pay for this assault. The Ultramarines would play a huge role in the Great Crusade, a time where hundreds of planets were claimed by the Imperium. While other legions would only leave destruction in their wake, the Ultramarines would leave a claimed planet better off than when they first discovered it. They would arm them with a military, supply them with trade routes, and turn the planet into one of 500 they protect in the Ultramar system. This tactic of not being an army of war machines, but an army of protectors, set the legion up for success. But alas, tragedy struck during the Horus Heresy. This is a dark time in the history of humanity, where almost half the Primarchs were corrupted by chaos magic, which turned them into monstrous heretics. Gilliman and his soldiers' first exposure to the conflict is depicted in the book No No Fear. In the book, their betrayal was first revealed to the Ultramarines on the planet of Kalth, when Chaos Space Marines, who held a sick grudge against the Ultramarines, called Word Bearers, rained hellfire on the unsuspecting soldiers. It was an absolute slaughter, and at first Gilman thought this was some sort of mistake and broadcasted a message to his brother, Lorgar, leader of the Word Bearers, and told him to cease fire. It was then Gilliman had to come to grips that this was no mistake. Lorgar was a traitor to the Imperium of Man, a traitor to his brothers, and had devolved into a bastard child of the Emperor. As the carnage raged on and Rabute's Astartes were laid to waste, rage filled the Primarch and he relayed a new message to his despicable brother. Lorgar of Calchas, you may consider the following. 1. I entirely withdraw my previous offer of a solemn ceasefire. It is cancelled and will not be made again. To you or any of your motherless bastards. 2. You are no longer any brother of mine. I will find you, I will kill you, and I will hurl your toxic corpse into hell's mouth. <laughs> oh man, yeah, I uh, don't care. 
A hole was then blown into Gilliman's spaceship by a giant demon, and as the Primarch was sucked into the vast vacuum of space, he was just so pissed and so badass that while floating in space without a helmet, he literally punched the heads off of Chaos Space Marines. So how this works is that a spaceship has like a thin atmosphere around it, and I like to think the only reason why that lore is written is so we can explicitly get a scene where a guy launches himself into space and punches heads off of people. This battle ended with Gilliman being offered to join the forces of Chaos, and in response, he ripped out his enemy's heart, and Gilliman and the Ultramarines would hunt down the traitorous word bearers and find themselves in a few of the many conflicts of the Horus Heresy Civil War. This included Gilliman getting into a 2v1 fight with Lorgar and his other corrupted brother named Angron. He managed to match both of their strength for a while, but would ultimately get his ass kicked and be forced to retreat. The Horus Heresy ended with the Emperor of Mankind critically wounded on the throne and the heretics repelled for the time being. With the Emperor left in critical and unresponsive condition, the Imperium was now organized and ran by a council called the Senatorum Imperialis, a group of 12 of the most powerful individuals in government, and Rebute Gilliman served as the Lord Commander of the Imperium. Now, unfortunately, Gilliman's time as Lord Commander would be short-lived, after he'd lost a fatal duel with his corrupted brother named Fulgrim. But the effects of Gilliman's actions as the Lord Commander can still be seen to this day. Easily, the most impactful piece of work he developed was the Codex of Astartes. This is a sacred tome that covers every ruling a space marine must follow, from recruitment, combat deployment, weapon optimization, and the resisting of heinous heresy in the galaxy. One important rule is that space marine legions are split into smaller chapters of a thousand. This decentralized the space marine's power, so rogue Astartes falling in the chaos could not start a civil war like the Horus Heresy ever again. Now, various legions follow the rules of the Codex of Astartes to varying degrees, but the Ultramarines treat it like teachings directly from the Emperor himself. In fact, if an Ultramarine does not follow the Codex to a T, it is seen as an act of heresy, and they're sent off into a suicide mission called a Death Oath even if their breaking of the Codex is the morally right thing to do. Um, to clarify, anime is not morally right. But there's a reason for this. Following the Codex like it's the Gospel has made the Ultramarines into the most well-organized strike force in the Imperium, with the ability to dominate in all forms of combat. Now, becoming an Ultramarine is another challenge in itself, which is inspired by the upbringing of their Primarch. Typically, recruits are found among the 500 planets of Ultramar, and they must undergo two grueling trials. First is the Exposure Trial, where adolescent recruits are shipped off to dangerous planets and must survive for a set period of time. In rare cases, families may even cast out their infants into these trials. <laughs> Next, some recruits may have to endure the challenge trial, which basically means they have to get the shit beaten out of them by an ultramarine and are judged by how badly they lose. All right, I'm bored. Uh, the will of the emperor is to kill you now. Wait, what? If recruits are proven to be worthy contenders, they will undergo surgery and have around 20 different organs implanted into their body, and then they're injected with something called a gene seed. Basically, Primark juice that turns them into eight foot tall, roided out super soldiers. 
And congratulations, now after a bunch of training and conditioning, you are ready to fight in an intergalactic war for the Imperium. And because this is Warhammer, there are a lot of wars. But how these wars are set up is more like WWE in space. And the Ultramarines have fought in dozens of wars against dozens of enemies, and have won pretty much every single one because they're kind of sort of the main characters in a lot of 40k media. But probably the most notorious wars are the Tyrannic Wars against the Tyranids. <laughs> Tyranids are space traveling insectoids with an outrageous amount of units, all connected by a central hive mind looking to consume every living organism in the universe. So they're the Zerg from Starcraft. Well, more like the Zerg are directly copied from Tyranids, but you get the idea. During the First War, the Imperium's first contact with the Xenos was when they tore apart the world of Tehran, <laughs> which is actually how they got their name, the Tyranids. Another notable world they devoured was Prandium, which in Latin means late breakfast. <laughs> when consuming all of the biomass on the planet, the Tyranids even consumed the world's atmosphere for nutrients. Their insatiable hunger then led them to the world of Macrag, and absolutely rocked the Ultramarines. In fact, the only way the Space Marines were able to turn the tide of battle was by sending one of their prized battleships into the bulk of Tyranid forces and self-detonating it, creating a space vortex that sucked the creatures into oblivion. This sacrifice gave them the opportunity to reclaim their planet, but suffered very heavy losses. And afterwards, a large section of the first company consisted of veterans from these tyrannic wars and specialized in the eradication of the Xenos. And in recent lore developments, in the 10th edition of 40k, there is a fourth Tyranid invasion happening. So the rivalry between these two factions is alive and well. You know how I said Gilman, the Primarch of the Ultramarines, was dead? Well, I lied! The Primarch would be laid to rest on his homeworld of Macrag on a throne surrounded by a stasis field, much like his father. And his shrine would be an important holy site for the Imperium. Flash forward 10,000 years to the 41st millennium, and there is currently an assault by Chaos Space Marines. During the conflict, Gilliman was resurrected with the help from a cyborg slugman, a living saint, a woman in a cool hat, and a space elf. I wish I could give you context to all of these characters, but they all require their own separate videos. Destroy these slaves of the false emperor! The enemy wishes to fight, brothers! Let us indulge them! During the fury of combat, the loyal Primarch was resurrected, his very holy presence demanding the attention of every combatant in the room. <laughs> oh, fuck. Gilman sprung into combat immediately after being dead for 10,000 years, and now the temple would be the heretic's tomb. As the dust cleared, Rubute took note of the fate of the Imperium after his 10,000 year long coma, and he was disturbed at what he saw. You see, his father, the Emperor, had led humanity with the concept called the Imperial Truth. In summary, it was the concept that humanity should not be plagued by the worship of gods, superstition, or faith. Instead, they should focus on science, logic, and reason. Now in the 41st millennium, Rubute sees the entire Imperium praising the Emperor as a god and are fanatically worshipping him. Religion has now become the largest characteristic that unifies mankind, which has turned them into intolerant, 
hateful, and so stubborn it has restricted their technological advancement. The Imperium has embodied every single negative characteristic of humanity to a ridiculous degree. Quadrillions of humans spend their lives in misery, either dying on a factory floor or just becoming another casualty in pointless wars while humanity slowly withers away into nothingness. The wealthy are a part of the 0.00001% of the population, and corrupted nobles rule over humanity in a fascist regime and use the punishment of the god emperor to enact their will on the populace. Death to the impure! I mean, there are space nuns who sing hymns about the god emperor of mankind while they torture maybe heretics and put them in death machines on the battlefield. And they have lab grown lobotomized babies as servants. What the fuck? Now here's Rabute, who everyone views as the son of God, knowing that this is the exact opposite thing his father would have wanted but the Imperium has become so fanatical that they would kill him before admitting their faith is wrong. Now, to me personally, this is what makes Rabute such an interesting character, and it's up to him to somehow save the Imperium from the death spiral they're currently in. Because, oh yeah, also during this time, all of his brothers are either dead, missing, or have turned into literal demons. With Gilliman's pragmatic leadership mind, he's trying to lead the Imperium with humanity's best interest. Emphasis on try. Here's a brief summary of how that's going. In the Terran Crusade, Gilman fights every single flavor of Chaos Space Marine and Demon possible. Gilman then has a one-on-one -on -one talk with the Emperor, who addresses his only living loyal son like a tool rather than his own son, which only strengthened Gilman's beliefs that his father was not a god, but just some rotting ass in a chair. Next is the Era of Indominus, where Gilman fights against Chaos Space Marines that fart, and Gilman actually dies again, but is then revived by his father, which only weakens his belief, and, you know, perhaps his dad actually is a god. And while he's still undecided, Rabute has learned that he can use religion to galvanize humanity and use it as a weapon to inspire his soldiers, even if he doesn't necessarily believe it himself. And like I said, the Imperium has to deal with yet another Tyranid invasion. But thankfully, one of Gilliman's loyal brothers, Lion L. Johnson, woke up from a long nap, so the entire fate of humanity doesn't rest entirely on Rabute's shoulders. In recent history, Gilliman rewrote and modernized parts of the Codex and helped introduce the Primaris Space Marines. They're bigger, they're better, they're stronger in every way. So, uh... Why do they even exist? It's kind of redundant, and well, to be honest, this entire universe exists so that Games Workshop can sell tiny plastic army men figures. And that is the exact reason why Primaris Space Marines exist, because they needed to scale up their models. And that is basically the Ultramarines and their Primarch. Like I said, very brief introduction of Rabute, and to get the full story and its relationships with those around him, you'll need your own independent video or five. Like, there's this whole meme in the community where he wants to bang a space elf even though there's really no lore backing up that they're romantic. Uh, so in summary, Ultramarines and their Primarch are the quintessential soldiers of the Imperium. They are protectors of humanity and are led by the Son of God who has been a beacon of leadership for humanity to follow in this grim dark universe. Pretty much, they're the good guys. Well, as good as xenophobic, zealous, imperialist, mutated, superhuman warriors uh, really can be. If you want more Warhammer lore, check out the link on your screen right now. And you can support this channel while getting something in return by checking out the link down below for a free Warhammer audiobook. I personally recommend the short story series called Nexus for newcomers. And again, you can grab this free audiobook by clicking the link in the description. Thanks for watching and subscribe.